Welcome back to Olive Gray Avenue. I'm Ruth and today we are going over how I built this raised garden bed with a fountain to replace the wood ones that we did about three years ago. So let's get straight into it. It's gonna be a fun journey. Thank you for being here and watching all of our videos. We really appreciate your support. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and let's get going. We had a clean slate to start working on these raised garden beds because Steve had to remove the previous raised bed before we built the pergola. He dug down a couple of inches to give the pea gravel some place to go. Then he tamped the pea gravel. We don't have a tamp though, so he used a block of wood that we have just to compact the gravel and help get it as level as possible. He had to place every cinder block and level each and every one of them. This was the longest part of the process, it took the most amount of time, and it was the most tedious. This base layer is the foundation of the entire thing, so it is super important that it is level and pretty much perfect. But once this is perfect, everything else just flies by. When building a structure with cinder blocks, it's really important to stagger the cinder blocks. So we did this by buying the half cinder blocks that they sell, they're half the size, and we put them on either end of the structure. We're on the last cinder block um, for this wall. This first layer is really the most important and takes the most time. And then after this, everything will be really quick and easy because after this is laid, everything will be level off of this because Steve has spent so much time and effort leveling every single cinder block as he puts it down. We have that layer of pea gravel on the bottom so that we can help level things out and it's going to be beautiful. Right now we have this base layer all finished. There's three extra ones from the last time I showed you. That'll be a little surprise, I'll tell you what's coming next with that. But we have this base layer done, it's all level. That took a lot of time and now we're just going to be able to fly and glue everything from here. So just to extra secure everything we're going to put sand in between all the gravel uh, and then also fill all these little cinder block holes with the dirt we excavated just to make everything super secure and sturdy i told you the second layer would go quick so we just stacked the second layer on top of that base layer since it's level all we have to do is just stack them there but make sure to keep staggering all the cinder blocks so now I will tell you what the extra bump out on the back is. We are making a fountain in the middle of this raised planter. We went and toured a house that was basically my dream house and it had this amazing fountain in the courtyard and I don't want to wait to get my dream home to get something that I absolutely love in my home. So we are putting this awesome fountain into this design and making it come to life. To finish off the top, we're using concrete caps to build the perimeter of the raised garden beds. Now that the structure is complete, I'm cutting down tile for the surface of the fountain. So right now we've attached this front perimeter, which will be that first base wall, to make the two little gardens and the base of the fountain. These blocks down here are not attached yet because we had to figure out how we're going to do the plumbing for our pump, the water pump. And we figured out, went to the hardware store, got a whole bunch of series of attachments and adapters and everything that'll work to get this pump going. It took a while, but we got it. Come to the decision that we will be running it from this end here. We're gonna go through this block, which is why we have this drill or concrete that I just happen to have. We're gonna go through here. So we go in and then up the actual structure itself. We'll go up and then we're gonna connect to a set of pipes, which would be the downspouts of the fountain itself. Steve drilled a hole through the cinder block to run the tube up through the hollow part of the blocks into the downspouts. 
He filled the spouts with some copper tubing and also drilled the holes in the concrete cap for those spouts to come out. There's a whole lot going on with both of us working here, but while Steve figures out all the tubing, I am cutting the tile and tiling the inside of the fountain. There is such little information on the internet about how to build a fountain like this that I was very much just making it up as I went. Even asking people at the tile store I went to the proper grout to use and everything, people were kind of clueless. I guess this isn't something people do every day. <laughs> So after the grout fully cured, we filled it up with water to test it out. Test number one. All right, I'm eating bagel <laughs> in the morning. 62 degrees outside, it's delicious. Test number one. <gasps> Here we go. Oh my gosh. Weird that it's going there. Yeah, it's like the furthest one. What setting do you have it on? It was on the lowest one. <clears throat> Turn it up. Now it's on the highest. Now it's on the highest? Mm -hmm. Is the through. battery power on? Mm -hmm. <sighs> we'll figure this out. Let's take. So it wasn't coming through initially. It was only coming out of this end because there wasn't enough water coming through, enough pressure. And we undid the line here to see if this was pumped. The pump was pumping pressure and it'll pump all the way across. So there's enough pressure. So we undid this line and in doing so, I realized that this outer corrugated tube can stay still while you spin the actual connector into whatever you're connecting, but it doesn't let the inner tube, which carries the water, spin freely. So when we turn it on, when we screw, so it, when on. We screw it on, we're actually just spinning that tube and closing it and kinking it up. So I noticed that because I was able to blow air into it. But when you spin, and like, you know, I turned it in a couple times, and then you blow and it's, you can't. A lot more pressure is needed. So we connected to the tube directly. And then that connector connected to the pump, I just spun the pump instead. We just spins the electrical cable, which doesn't matter. That doesn't need to, it doesn't work like that, right? So then, now when we test it, it should flow. I hear it. Bubbles. Two, three. <gasps> it works! I have been afraid to seal this up because what if we need to get back here? What if something happens? What if we need maintenance? and we could make like a door back here, but I'm just gonna seal it up because worst case scenario, something does happen. We need to get back here and we have to demo the whole thing. <laughs> but maybe I should do a door. See, this indecision, this is what just like halts projects and just keeps me from making any progress. is now all beautifully put together. I did end up leaving a hole there. I'm just gonna make a little cover for it. It'll be fine. <laughs> um, I'm gonna cover all of this, everything's glued in place. And we're gonna start on the stucco, which it's not really stucco. Ooh, there's a big spider. Get out of here. Oh, there's so many spiders. We're going to do, it's like a surface cement, surface bonding cement, something like that. So. It should act like stucco. We're gonna finish it like that and hopefully it looks beautiful. I was getting all my supplies together last night and then I realized what time it was and it was date night. So I did not start doing all the concrete goodness, but we're doing it right now. <laughs> so the good thing is now these are all dried. So I don't have to worry about any of that. 
water in here good. And now I'm going to mix up some of that, probably half of a bag and get started and see how this goes. Hopefully it works well. I don't know. I watched some videos, did my research. Should be all right. Theoretically, it'll work. Somehow I lost audio at the very beginning, so you won't be able to hear my brilliant commentary throughout this process, but I'll try to touch on the important parts. So I'm gonna layer my gloves. I have my working gloves and then these. Similar to when you're working with concrete, you want all of your supplies ready so there's no delay in you running to get something that you forgot. This stuff dries really quick. It doesn't dry as fast as concrete, thank goodness, but it still dries quickly and you don't wanna just leave it setting. I hadn't opened this bag before pouring it in this bucket, so I didn't realize that there are these fiberglass strands throughout the powder. The package says only to mix this for like three to five minutes, but I'm pretty sure I mixed it for way longer than that because I thought my drill would work and it did not. So I had to use this shovel and it was just a bit more difficult than I anticipated. So I wet the concrete blocks before starting, like the instruction said, and then applied the mix, starting at the bottom and working my way up. I started at the back just to make sure I could get my technique down before I went to the front. If I had any mistakes, I could fix them here. I found that the corners were much easier to do and make them look nice if the other side was a little dry already. After each section was done, I misted it with my hose because this needs to be water cured. A home stretch. I wasn't feeling well, so I didn't finish this small little section, <laughs> but I'm feeling a little bit better. I wanna get it done, so I'm gonna um, stucco the front, the other half of this, and then I left the top here undone uh, because I thought it would be easier to do this whole thing when the back and front was dry. I put this tabletop over here so that not as much falls into the fountain. Yeah, I'm super glad I put this down. don't spray it, the concrete absorbs, absorbs some moisture, oh gosh, from the stucco stuff. I know it's not stucco, but that's what I'm calling it. So it absorbs the moisture from this and then it dries too quickly. If you let the stucco dry a little bit and then come back over it with your, and come back over it to smooth it out, it works a little bit easier. built a shed and now I 
have a new concrete washout. All right, we're at the hardware store and we are going to get some plants for our new raised garden beds. And it's still kind of cold, but I don't want to wait. So let's go get some plants. It's all clean, so now we're going to fill her up. The moment we've all been waiting for is the budget breakdown. I totaled up all the receipts and everything came out to just under $600. Considering that the solar pump was about 250 of that budget, I'd say this is a great budget-friendly DIY. all done the fountain was a lot of work it was a lot of stress we didn't always know if it was gonna work out we went through a lot of trials and tribulations with this thing but I'm so happy with it it's like my own Italian modern villa type thing and with every project we do it's getting more and more like that out here the pergola the fountain the bricks the vineyard table, everything. So the vineyard table is coming up really soon, as soon as we figure out how to get it back <laughs> in the backyard. And as soon as we do that, I will post a video for y'all to see. So my little Italian villa oasis is almost complete here. This is a huge stepping stone in the right direction. We have another raised garden bed to do. I'm not there yet. Oh, that's a lot of work a lot of work so we're not there yet but that'll be coming soon let me know if there are any questions that you have about this project or any others and things you might want to see in the future I really appreciate all of y'all being here subscribing and watching our videos you really are helping our channel grow and helping us do more projects so as always thanks for watching this video and keep watching them until the next one comes out see you later like and subscribe yeah <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Ready? You see oh my here. gosh. <laughs> come here. Bye, Mommy. Oh, bye to me? Where are you going? Bye!